Drew, I hate you so much. Oh. Hello, Drew. Huh? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, everybody. This uh, is Right Now. You get to be here with Drew and Micah today. Yes. And that's not the most exciting thing happening today. Cheers. What is happening? It's Drew's birthday. This is all a ruse. We're not doing Right Now. Oh, God. Oh, God. No, we're not. <laughs> But it is Drew's birthday, and it that's is. the most exciting thing happening today. So happy birthday, Drew! Happy birthday, Drew! Thank you, thank you. I'd like to, uh, as a 35-year-old, announce my candidacy for 2020. Oh, um, I'd vote. Wow. For you, Drew. Thank you, Micah. Yeah, thank you. No, we're gonna talk about <laughs> some more ink names. Micah and I did a video on this not too long ago, where we kind of picked some of our favorite inks that have interesting uh, history uh, throughout their. Um, behind their names and we did it again because we kind of like to nerd out about this so if you don't enjoy nerding about that then maybe this one's not for you but if you do and i'm sure that you've got an ink that you particularly enjoy the name or the history behind let us know in the comments and uh we're going to share ours with you yeah um do you want to go first yeah sure um we'll start with uh diamine Tyrion purple from game of thrones from game of thrones peter dinklage is in this box <laughs> no uh, uh no so I, I started reading a book recently about the history of ink which, okay because you know Wait, what yes did you really? honestly it's really really dry the guy's a, a big a really big academic did you like ink at all before you started working here no okay but i'm so like just happened but i just wanted to know like it was just you know it's a little book it's called 40 centuries of ink it is really dry though wow. like it is yeah, you gotta be. So it's a dry ink. It is a dry. It is a, <laughs> a dry, dry book about. It's a dry reader. It is a dry uh, book about ink. So yeah. So, and he mentions Tyrion purple in it, and I had no idea the history behind it. I mean, we've sold it ever ever since I've been here and before, yeah. and yeah, so well, I was no. kind of looked at it, and I, I always thought of Game of Thrones, and I was like, what? no, that's one of the newer inks. Actually, we didn't uh, we didn't used to sell that when I was uh, when I started. Yeah, I'm mean, ever since I have. How about that? So yeah, I was like, what what is going on with this? And he mentions it in the book, and I was like, no way. Huh. So some of you might know this if you're, you know, a history nerd. Um, but Tyrion Purple um, comes from it was a little sea snail that lived like kind of off the the coast of, of Rome, and they would take them and they would extract this. Wait, ink so from so them. the Tyrion is a sea snail? No, it just it's called Tyrion purple. It's oh. also called Phoenician purple or Tyrion red. It's it's got a lot of names. But um it was really popular in Phoenicia and Rome and it was a status symbol because it would take hundreds of these little sea snails to even extract a gram of this ink and they would use it to dye clothes and paper and use it for ink and all of this stuff. And it would take hundreds of sea snails to do this. So That's they, terrible. It's all yeah, and it was so labor intensive. It was so expensive what? that it was it became a status symbol. And the really cool thing about it is that over time, it wouldn't fade. It would actually get brighter over time. Mm -hmm. So this is re like Tyrian purple was really kind of like the <clears throat> first luxury ink. In so it was history. like 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 a legit royal purple. Yeah, it was like because the, of the status. It's exactly what it was. Yeah, it was wow. always like yeah. I kings had that. and Caesar, so yeah. So Tyrion Purple was basically like the first luxury ink to exist in history. Wow. Which is really, really neat. So I, I saw that and I was like, wow, this is a way cooler story that I like. Yeah, Tyr Tyrion's neat, but like this is way cooler than, you know, that is show. fascinating. So yeah. All right. Yeah. The Snail Genocide ink. Wonderful. The Snail Genocide. <laughs> There's got to be a good portmanteau for that. Oh man, snail uh, side. So I got, I picked, I picked two, and we'll start off with uh, this guy, and um, this is Noodler's Dark Matter, and it's just a black ink, really, but it's got a cool story behind it. So what happened was Nathan Tardif of Noodler's Ink was sent a old school big bottle of ink through some guy in Chicago that said that he once worked for a um, undisclosed uh, location, uh, government job somewhere, and he he gave him enough information, and the bottle had you know certain uh, initials uh, indicating it was from Arizona in the 1940s. Enough information to conclude that it was ink used during the Manhattan Project or uh, at the uh, Los Alamos Lab in New Mexico, aka Project Y. So Nathan was like, oh, okay, this is uh, ink that was used while they built the atomic bomb. Uh, Robert Oppenheimer is uh, on the bottle here. His uh, famous quote, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds, is on here. Because, uh, you know, he had a hand in uh, something very, very destructive. So the gentleman that sent him this ink asked him to make some more of it. And obviously, w once he figured out the significance of this bottle, Nathan was like, oh, yeah, definitely I will do that. And Nathan actually has a lot of inks that we carry that were reverse engineered from something that he found. This one, 
I know that Kung Ta Chang was one of them. The V Mail series, which includes Red Ball Red, uh, Midway Blue, Burma Road Brown, and a couple others. Operation Overlord. Orange. Overlord, yep. So he likes to do that, and this is one he did, and it's just a really crazy story that he actually had some of this ink from this crazy, crazy secret project that had a massive, massive uh, influence in world history. So he did it, he sent the guy back his original bottle, sent him the new ink, and uh, yeah, it ended up being a really cool black, and I like it because even though it's a pretty standard black, writing dark matter when you write what ink you're using is just a cooler thing to write than, you know, black or... And we actually have a, uh, I think we have a cool video on like the difference between the different types of Noodler's blacks that we carry. Yeah, it's, a, it's helpful. So check that out. Um, and then, uh, let's see, there's one more thing about this. Oh, there was, it wasn't just a total standard black. There was actually a way that they, the government could identify this ink back in the day. So it looked similar to other inks used in the 40s, but this particular ink, through some experimental technique or test that they could run, they could identify, yes, this was the ink used during the Manhattan Project. Yeah. So there you have it. That is what I didn't I didn't know like that and you always have these cool reverse engineer, engineering like noodler stories. I didn't know that he like did all that. He did. Ah. He did. It says Los Al Alamos ink on it. Oh. I wonder if he, he uses that bottle of ink anymore. Like if he, like, I don't know if he actual... got to. I don't know if he got to keep it. Oh, oh! It'd be cool if the guy just sent it to him, and like every now and then he's like, "I'm just gonna sign a check with like, you know, the ink that was used for the Manhattan Project." Like that I is that's know. just wild. He might have been able to keep him. a little bit. I don't think he got to keep the whole bottle though. Just take a sample of it. So what else you got? Um, okay, so this one, um, Colorverse Strelka and JFK's dog Pashinka. Um, I thought this one was really neat. I, 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 it was another one of those that I like, kind of looked at the name and I was like, what is this? Like, what is this about? The whole JFK's dog Pushinka, like that's a, it's very specific. They're, yeah. not, they're not leaving a whole lot to the imagination there. Yeah, and when I was like looking up stuff for this right now, I was kind of looking at some of the animals in space to see if there's like a particularly neat story. And I kept coming back to JFK's dog Pushinka. I want to know more. But it wasn't on the list of like the, you know, the Wikipedia of like animals that went into space. And so I was like, what is going on with this, like, with his dog? And so I looked it up, and, and it's actually a really, kind of a really cute story. Oh, good. So yeah. no, the, nothing died. No, 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 well, maybe. I don't know. Come on, man. I mean, I guess this is a long time ago, so they're probably, I don't know, sorry. No, there's a website that tells you <coughs> if a dog will die in a movie, and I make sure that I check oh, that every time. I can't handle that. That's so sad. I can't handle that. Oh, okay, well, so, we'll start, we'll start with Strelka. This is the, the, the bigger one, what is this, the 65 mil. Um, so Strelka was a dog that was sent into space by the Russians. Can you hear me that water? Uh, yes. I believe she was the second, um, dog that was sent into space. Okay. Um, so, uh, just a Russian dog sent into space. It was really cool. It was, you know, kind of the budding of the, the space program, um, especially in Russia. And they were, they were kind of the first ones to send living beings right. into space. And so... And a living human. And so, so JFK was like kind of a little salty about it. He was, you know, it was, he, he uh, and so... Where Pushinka comes in is that um, Nikita Khrushchev was mm -hmm. visiting the United States and um, just having dinner at the White House and uh, Kennedy's wife was sitting beside Khrushchev. And I don't, what, do you, what do you talk about to the leader of the Soviet Union? You know what I mean? Like, so she kind of runs out of things to talk Didn't about. Did she have an interesting birthmark? Uh, oh. <laughs> or was that the other guy? I have no idea about okay. Russian birthmarks. Who was the guy with the thing on his forehead? I feel dumb now. Oh, I don't, I don't, I have no idea. Oh, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, let us know if you know. <laughs> um, no, uh, and so she's like, asking, starts asking about Strelka. Like, oh, you guys sent this this dog into space. Good. And, and he's like, yeah. And you're like, did did she have puppies or something? <laughs> and so he was like, I mean, yeah, she had puppies. And they're like, oh, that's really cute. And then a few weeks later, this package arrives from no. Russia, and he had sent her one of the puppies from the, Strelka. Wait, wait, wait. How did this thing get shipped? I don't know. I just, I, I guess on a ship or like a, a a plane or something. I don't know. He shipped a puppy? But he shipped a puppy from Russia to the United States. And, oh and Kushinka was one of Strelka's puppies. And so it was honestly like, it's kind of a mix between like a really, really cute display and like kind of like a, you know, like we're, we're, there was a, a lot of tensions between the Soviet Union and Russia. It's kind of a, a cool extension. That is pretty or cool. Or it is the most baller like move that you could ever make. <laughs> So he's just like, oh yeah, we sent this dog in space. Have a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get a puppy. Wow, that's awesome. So I'm swabbing up Mars Curiosity. 
now, and this is another Colorverse ink, as they have this space thing going on. I didn't even know you were picking one. We just have, uh, we're picking this kind of the same thing. So, this has been on my mind recently, because as you may know, Opportunity, the rover, recently saw its last day. And not long, so not long after that, Curiosity, which was the most recent uh, rover launched in 2011, uh, had a little bit of a blackout period. It kicked into safe mode for a little while due to a glitch, and everybody was like, no, 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 not that one, too. Uh, but it's back online. We're good to go. But this is just a really cool rover, and it does a lot of really neat things. So it got up there. It's the biggest rover, too. It's almost the size of a car. Whoa. It's got lasers on it. it like, if it <laughs> sees something interesting on the soil, it vaporizes the rock or, you know, a soil sample and then scans the vapor that's left over and is like, okay, yeah, no, that's still interesting. Let me whip out a microscope real quick, check it out. And if that's interesting, let me just put it on one of these little miniature laboratories on my back to, to fully analyze it. It's amazing. Wow. It's such a cool thing. So it's, its whole mission is to, uh, well, not the whole mission, but one of the biggest um, objectives of the mission is to find out whether or not Mars could have or could... Uh, um, withstand or withstand life with sustain life sustain, sustain life. life so that's why it's there so it checks out the atmosphere soil samples you know looking for you know any sort of microbiology that could lead uh, scientists to think that it could one day sustain uh, sustain life it's a really cool rover and uh, it really cool. it's on it, it was a two-year mission 2011 well it launched in 2011 arrived in 2012 it took almost a year to get there and uh, it's on just kind of an indefinite mission now so they're just gonna keep on going until uh, it meets the same fate as its friend Until opportunity. It yeah. Everything is growing dark. Good night. <laughs> no. It's still going strong though. Yeah. Curiosity. All right. Last one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Last one. Is that cool, Andy? We'll wrap this yeah. up. Okay. We'll make it quick. We'll wrap this up. Uh, Noodlers Roam Burning. Ooh, that's a fun one. This is such a neat ink. If if you have been in the game for a while, you probably know about this, but I think this is some of the coolest stuff that Nathan has to offer. It really like. You just don't really find anything like this anywhere else. No. Um, so Rome Burning is an ink that he made that has a pretty neat property. Actually, I swiped a sample of it just so we can swab it up and, and see how neat it is. But um, so it is made for the Great Fire of Rome. Um, when you swab it up, it is this kind of like really nice, like kind of golden brown, bronze color. He, he you know, he wanted to kind of capture this like the burning of the city and the bronze mm -hmm. statues and all these. It's a really, really interesting color. And then when you put water on it, once it's dried, it turns purple. And so it's like the Caesar's purple under this kind of bronze brown ink. And I think that is so cool. It is really um, awesome. This happened in, in, I think it was like 64 AD was when it happened. And there's a lot of controversy surrounding it, whether Nero did it on purpose or it was just an accident or whether he was trying to, you know, blame whatever parties but um but it, it this is just like this is such a special ink because you just don't find anything like that anywhere else um so yeah the 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 kind of bronze burning of the mm -hmm. city with caesar's purple hiding behind it so you know kind of put throwing his hat in the ring of like ah uh, yes nero is under all of this um so yeah so we're gonna we'll uh that's why I brought the cup of water we'll we'll throw a little splash on it or something nice like all right well here you go um Yes. Uh, and Brian also did, uh, um, wait, no, I don't know if Brian did a video on this. Nathan has a really, what, oh, the, oh. the, the swabbing, yeah. okay. Nathan did a really long video on this, so you can actually uh, watch that if you want the whole scoop on Nero and the burning and why the ink does what it does. Does it need to dry first? Um, I tried to get one of the drier parts of it. Yeah, I think it might need to dry first before submerging. I didn't get a yeah. chance to get Pushinka and Strelka. Anyway, yes. you can check out the swabs for Pushinka and Strelka, but I did swab up um, some of the other ones here. You've got your Curiosity, your Dark Matter, and your Tyrion, a.k.a. the Snail Ink. The that, snail that, ink. That, that really fascinates yeah. me. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes you wonder where they got all of the ingredients for different colors back in the day when they didn't have a lot of dyes available to them. They There's had to get all it, kinds of stuff. They had to get it from like, nature, yeah. It'd be like pieces of bone and all this crazy. crazy crazy stuff so thank you for being here micah i greatly enjoyed this thanks for having me i hope you enjoyed this too it was definitely interesting to us and again let me know let us know if you have any inks that you particularly enjoy the naming conventions behind and right on enjoy your week right on thanks and say happy birthday to drew in the comments